color casting on this show will be the inimitable uh, Flip Wilson, with or without his uh, Geraldine. Without Flip, Geraldine. Without Geraldine, without we're going to play it straight tonight, Flip. That's right, definitely. What do you think of the fight? Well, I think we're in for a great battle. I think it'll end within nine. I won't predict the winner, but I do think we'll end within nine. And the famous Wyatt Earp of uh, television fame and one of our great stars of the screen, you O'Brien, you? Hi, Don. Nice to see you. Hi, everybody out there. All of you at Hefts. Wish I could be with you, but I'm happy I'm here, and I think it's going to be a great fight. Uh, the workouts have been super, and uh, I think we're going to uh, see really a tremendous contest uh, between these two guys. Joe's in great shape, and so is Ollie. That's Joe getting in. And here's Joe Frazier coming into the ring. Joe Frazier looks pretty sharp in there. George Benton, a former middleweight. Eddie Futch, his manager and trainer. And, of course, also with me on the telecast, an old friend of yours, Ken Norton. Ken, say... Uh, what you think of this big bout? Well, Don, it's going to be a very epic battle. It's going to be one of uh, power versus technique. I feel that uh, Joe, as I said before, is going to have to get on the inside. Ali is going to try to keep the man on the outside with the uppercuts, with the hooks, and on the end of his punches. Just to go over the rules once again, the scoring, if the bout goes the limit, is the five-point must. Five points to the winner of a round, four or less to the loser. The mandatory eight count is in effect if a man is floored. There is no three knockdown rule. That has been waived. A man could be floored any number of times. It is up to the referee. And if a man is floored at or near the ringing of the bell, the count will continue, and he must arise before 10 or be considered knocked out, except in the last round. A man knocked out of the ring is allowed back. He's allowed 20 seconds to get back in. He must not help from his handler. Here comes the champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. He's on his way into the ring now. Here comes the champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. Earlier, President Ferdinand Marcos and his lovely wife, President of the Philippines, were introduced. A roar goes up as uh, Ali comes into view. Muhammad Ali for this epic moment in the Philippine uh, Coliseum in Quezon City, adjacent to Manila. Ali weighed in at... <laughs> Ali weighed in 224 and a half at the official weigh-in on Saturday. When they fought in 71, Ali was 215, Frazier 205 and a half. Joe Frazier, Milt Bailey, Eddie Futch, and George Benton are with him. Muhammad Ali, Dick Sadler with him, his brother. In a moment, the ring announcer very capable Joe Cantata will send the ceremonies on its way. This is 15 rounds or less, as they say in boxing. <coughs> you know, Brian says it's a hot day. It must be 100 degrees here, you. Plus the humidity. Plus the crowd. I'd say there are about 30,000 here. Can't hold any more. Joe Frazier finally stripping down for the fray. He'll be wearing blue denim. There must be over a thousand uh, correspondents from all over the world covering this uh, epic fight. 
internationally for newspapers throughout the country, throughout the United States, throughout the world. Allie wearing white trunks, Joe Frazier wearing blue denim trunks. They have not put the gloves on yet. They will be eight ounce gloves. The referee will be Carlos Padilla from the Philippines. And as I told you earlier when I was talking with Ken Norton, all three of the officials are Filipinos. John, I'd like to make a comment about the weight factor. I feel that since they weighed in Saturday, that was, what, five days ahead of time, ahead of schedule. So therefore, the weight will have no bearing here because I'm sure by the time they worked out three, four more days, plus after they dried out, they were down to the fighting weight. And I would think that would be about 219 for Ali and maybe 212 for Frazier, can I? I just guess that. What do you think? Uh, possibly so. I'd say more around 220 for Ali because he's, he wants to go in a little heavier because it's hotter and he, he'll perspire more, and that way he'll uh, have more left in the end. I feel Joe will go down to about, two, you know, about 212. Or two eleven. Ken, would you think uh, Joe gets his hitting power from his big legs? He's got very big legs. I think that basically Joe receives his power from working in the slaughterhouse as a, as a, 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 a common worker at one time. That's very hard work. Plus, he had a very hard life coming up, and he really had to you know, work hard. And I feel that we're going to have a presentation here by ring announcer Joe Cantada. Is that the one they're giving me? <laughs> Well, it's probably for you, Ken. It's not for me. Well, I tell you, Don, I would take it home. It's a beautiful trophy. Very beautiful. There's Milt Bailey uh, with a quizzical expression on his face. What do you think Milt was thinking <laughs> of? He's the cut man for Joe Frazier. And Joe has never been cut up to now. Uh, he's been very fortunate in that sense. He uh, has that type of skin tissue that he's been, he swells, but it doesn't break. They've, uh, they've been waiting for the uh, gloves to come in, Flip. Uh, now the moment of truth is not far away, and I, I know you've got thoughts in your own mind, but what can you tell us? Well, uh, I can only say that along with myself and millions of other people, the suspense is just about over, and in a few moments we will either have the greatest heavyweight champion of all time or another sensational comeback and a setup for what will unquestionably be the greatest fight ever in history. <laughs> Thank you, Flip. You, uh... You know, Brian, only uh, two men have ever regained the heavyweight title after losing it. One was Floyd Patterson and the other Muhammad Ali. So Joe Frazier would like to join that select list. Well, I'll tell you, I, I, think, uh, I think the way Ali's going to go at it, I really think it's going to be uh, a good punch and fight. I don't think that he can uh, sit back and wait, because if it goes beyond eight rounds, I think Joe's got a good chance. So I think uh, uh, my own personal opinion is that Ali's going to try to work at him pretty well. Joe uh, has always been uh, vulnerable in the early rounds. I think he lost the first round to almost everyone he ever fought, except a few knockouts uh, with non-consequential fighters. He lost the first round twice to Quarry, to Jerry Lou, uh, to, to Jimmy Ellis, to uh, Muhammad Ali on two occasions. Mondo Ramos almost knocked him down in the first round. Oscar Bonavena had him down twice in the second. So Joe is a slow starter. He really is. And I, uh, I think that uh, that's going to be one of the great tests today as to how, how quick Joe's going to get warmed up and how uh, whether Ali wants to sort of play around for a little bit or really go at it. Ken Norton, what can Joe do about that? He knows he's a slow starter. He knows that Ali knows it. What can he do about it? I think his best defense against that would be to stay low and try to slip punches because if he's a slow starter until he gets warmed up, uh, he's uh, Interviewing here. Uh, wow. Okay, well, we just. I know. Go ahead, Ken. Okay, I, I think. Right, back to the Here's the announcer. Here. The winner of our main event will go this handsome trophy donated by. Donated by His Excellency. Donated by His Excellency yeah, President right. Ferdinand E. Marcos. Well, that goes to the 
sweater. You know, it's much over the corner, what corner the trophy's going into. <laughs> That's impressive. Do you want to put him over here? And just have The government and people of the Republic of the Philippines, in cooperation with Don King Productions Incorporated, proudly present the Thriller in Manila. Introducing in the blue corner Weighing 215 and a half pounds. Wearing light blue trunks with white stripes. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA. The challenger and former heavyweight champion of the world, Joe Frazier. talks to him. It's 15 rounds. The ring is 21 by 21, a rather large ring. Which is beneficial for Ali. And who should help the champion? It's 15 rounds. The nearest round one.
minutes are gone, round one. Alley holding behind the neck there. I'm going to ask Flip Wilson what he thought of that round. Flip? I think that was a sensational round, and I'm pretty sure that this would not go 15 rounds. That's my sincere opinion. What do you think, Hugh? Well, I, I think, as I said, uh, I think that Ollie realizes he's got to uh, come out and try to really do something in the first five rounds. And uh, that round proved it. He's going at Joe. He's not sitting back and playing around. Not at all. Tell him I, tell him I don't have a monitor, will you? We're waiting for round two. That was a big round for Muhammad Ali. No question about it. But Frazier always loses the first round. again.
was a big round for Ali with Frazier coming on at the end. Uh, he, uh, this this gonna, shows you what a six and a half inch reach can We're going to show gotta, some uh, shots here by Muhammad Ali, the champion. Big the right floor. hand. There's Joe Frazier now as we come up to round three. Ali uh, bowing in his corner. Angelo Dundee a little late getting out of the ring in uh, Ali's corner. Round three, scheduled for 15. Punches by uh, Frazier now as he's got Ali on the rope. Ali with the rope of dope. Frazier looking for an opening here. Almost a replica of Ali and Foreman last year. between the punches Frazier was throwing when uh, Ali was playing rope-a-dope and covering up on the ropes and the punches that Foreman uh, threw at Ali to no avail. Well, I would have to say that on Foreman's punches, there were more roundhouse punches. Joe's trying to pick his spots. He's trying to go between the hands. He's trying to go behind the elbows, between the kidneys, and this is bound to have a coming effect later on in the round if the fight goes that far. This um, is when uh, Ali puts on the rally towards the end of the round. Frazier cannot match hand speed with Ali, so his best bet is to try to stay inside, and Ali starts throwing as either tie him up or push him toward the ropes. I noticed that Ali missed a lot in that round, as though he were over-anxious. Uh, to a certain extent, he had played so much in the round, and toward the latter part of the round, always in the last 15 or 10 seconds, he tried to throw a big flurry. Here's round four. Frazier the blue denim trunk, and Ali the white. Ali, uh, 
instantly beats Frazier to the punch. Alley with the rope that goes again. Frazier looking for a spot. He's not wasting punches, however. one-sided fight so far. Keeps it his way. Go play with that dog. Go play with that dog. He's won by the referee. All right, ref. So this is going to be decided on condition. And uh, I think Joe is starting to smoke. Uh, but I think it's going to uh, end up the way a lot of people probably suspect. There's the corner of Ali as he leads the cheering. Ali leading his own cheering. His chief second, Angelo Dundee, with Drew Brown in there. Corner of Joe Frazier, Eddie Fudge, Milt Bailey, and George Benton. Round five coming up. <laughs> Neither boy looks the least bit tired so far, although uh, Frazier has taken a good going over. They're both trained for a long fight, I'm sure of that.
Frazier, the aggressor. Alley posing again. an awful lot like the first fight between Frazier and Ali in 1971 when Ali built up a big lead and then Frazier started to come on. I thought Frazier came on there. Let's, let's take a look at uh, Frazier landing this good punch. It's a very good left hook here by Joe. He leans back. And this is, uh, is going to be very detrimental to Ali in, in the later rounds if he stays on the ropes. Here's a very, there's the hook. Right and the I, I noticed he wasn't as sharp in that last round. He missed a lot. That's very true. Ali has to stay off the ropes. If he stays on the ropes, Joe can hit him in the, in the kidneys, under the heart, behind the ears, whatever. And it's bound to have a telling effect uh, later on in the fight. And yet he stayed on the rope against Foreman and won. Uh, Joe's a different type of fighter than Foreman. Short punches. A lot the shorter and a lot more precise with him. We're coming up to round six. One third of the fight is over. Should it go the distance? It's 15 rounds. Frazier, the blue trunk. Ali and White. I don't know what they score for aggressiveness in the Philippines, but uh... Frazier. Frazier has been the aggressor all the way. Coming in low. Right. 
This is a good round for Frazier. Well, Flip Wilson, I think it's turned into a pretty even fight after, yes, it's, after it's, a one-sided beginning. Yes, yes, I think uh, Joe has started to smoke, and it should be pretty close to even about now. He uh, landed two vicious left hooks at the start of the round. And we're coming up to round seven. It's been a fast bout. Let's uh, look at the replay here, Flip. That's a big left yes. hook. That was early in the round. I think it was Frazier's best punch of the fight so far. Frazier's corner as we're waiting for round Go seven. Joe! Round seven, scheduled for 15. Frazier coming back. Ali dancing for the first time. <laughs> Frazier's good right hand to the head for the first time. Frazier rolled with that punch. Patilla from the uh, Breaking off the action when he wants to. Resuming it when he wants to. Alley having a good round. Frazier <laughs> stood up under Alley's best shot. And vice versa. Coliseum. And uh, we're up to the halfway mark, or near it, Ken. I'd like you uh, to take a look at this uppercut by Ali, Ken. As you can see, Joe's got him on the ropes now. He'll step back, and Ali was his opening for the uppercut, which is very here it calm. Comes. Ooh, that was a very good, good uppercut. But as you know, in the first fight, this is how Joe caught him on the ropes. He was throwing an uppercut, and he caught him over the top with the hook. So it's very dangerous also. What do you think about condition of the two of them? Frazier has taken the more punishment, but Ali has taken a lot, too. What do you think, Ken? At the present time, I would have to say that uh, Frazier is in better condition. Would you really? Yes, I would. Well, 
That's interesting. How about you, Flip? Well, uh, as I said earlier, Joe is uh, really starting to smoke. It looked a little shaky from the go, but Joe is starting to smoke, and uh, I think we're going on a pretty good pace now, and uh, either man may win it right now. This round eight, Allie's trunks are dropping little by little. The supporter is obvious now. No knockdown. for the challenger. <laughs> Ranger is very strong and scoring heavily even though he took a lot in this round. on the inside. Brian to come in. Uh, you, uh, the 71 fight was a super fight, but I think this is just a super between I these men. Actually, I think it's better. Uh, Ollie's really staying in there and punching with him all the way, and he's neither one, you can, couldn't say that either one is carrying the fight to the other at this point, I don't think. And I think, uh, you know, they're both in superb condition, and Frazier is unbelievable. The amount times that he got hit on the head that he got clocked there that he could that he could stand there and keep coming at him it's just fantastic the punches that he's been taking ken norton what do you think now what do i think? coming up to round nine <laughs> at the present time ollie is definitely ahead uh, yeah. joe has to find some way to stop getting hit so much they're bound to have a telling effect soon uh he got stunned with a very good left hook there ollie hit him with a very good left hook right hand and joe was staggered but I, ollie didn't notice that he was taking advantage of it Round nine, scheduled for 15. Boys dripping perspiration. It's hot here. Raise of the blue denim trunks, alley and white. <laughs> alley up on his toes more, setting the pace. Oh, just as well for Ali that that one missed. Hey, 
Dodger has been hitting a low a lot lately. Get that guard down. Two minutes left in the round. Serving his strength there as Alley holds on. Joe trying to set him up for the left hook, and Alley knows it. And again, is beating him to the punch constantly. These are good body shots by Frazier when he gets them in there. No coming in faster. A minute to go in the round. hooking with that left hand, head and body, body and head. <laughs> Round almost over. to Frazier on aggressiveness. Yes, sir, we're on aggressiveness. Plus, when Ali starts boxing, he, he dances for maybe a few seconds, and he always ends up with his back on the ropes, which is very bad. This is Joe's best place. If Ali stays on the ropes, he's going to get picked to death by Joe's punching power. And now, so Ali has to keep him in the, in the center of the ring, or he has to throw quick flurries on the ropes and to get off the ropes quick. If he stays on the ropes, he's definitely going to uh, fall behind. You and, mean Ali? Yes, Ali, right. Ali. Joe's best position is on the ropes. He can't match Ali for speed in, in, the, in the middle of the right, ring. Right. And he can't uh, do anything, anything in the middle of the ring. He's too short. So his best place is on the ropes. And uh, he's, he's walking Ali to, he's wa just walking him straight to the ropes every time. I, I would think that his body shots have uh, got to take some toll on Ali. But Ali's a remarkable athlete. Uh, up to now, they don't seem to have bothered him. Have you noticed, they have to bother him. He hasn't been dancing. He starts to dance and he comes down off his toes, which means the body shots are bothering him. Round 10, scheduled for 15. <laughs> Alley setting himself to punch harder in this round. Alley going flat-footed. had an awful lot of trouble coping with Ali's fast hands. Muhammad Ali's got those fast hands. He keeps yelling, cross yourself, meaning get the arms across the body. <laughs> Fraser doesn't get the clean shots at Ali that Ali gets at him. Joe 
Joe is starting to grunt again with his punches. Ali doing the holding again. That did Ali no good. I think it's a pretty close fight. I do too. I do. The heavyweight championship of the world. I don't think there's any rounds of bruising action. Uh, nobody's got a decided edge as far as I can, I can see. And it's definitely uh, turns out to be the thriller that everyone expected. And I think we're in for a few more rounds. I was off on my prediction of it ending before nine, but I still don't believe it'll go 15. Well, you, O'Brien, do you have any thoughts on it? That well, I'll tell you the way it's going now. I think that uh, uh, I think it's going to go all the way. Let's see Joe Frazier here now in one of his uh, big rallies of the round. I still feel that Ollie's got control. Round 11, five to go. Ollie alternately dancing, fighting flat-footed and going to the ropes. that time. Now this is a switch. Joe is on the rope. all the way here in the Philippine Coliseum. So far, a good round for Ali. Frazier's corner. Referee trying to get them out of there. Frazier kicks off Ali. on Ali now with the right hand. Ali will probably Ali. open up all of a sudden. A minute to go in the round. Ken Norton 
I've seen a lot of them, but this has got a rank with Lewis and Kahn, Marciano and Walcott, and the first Ali Frazier fight. This that's, is one of the great ones. That's very true. These men are staying on the ropes, and this is where the men become men. There's, there's, there's no playing on the ropes. Ali's fighting back, which was he's, he's fighting more than people thought he could on the inside. There's a lot of action here. Let's see this now. Frazier trying to trap Ali on the ropes. Ali with those sharp punches. I notice that Ali's not getting a good follow through on his punches like Frazier is, though. Can he doesn't seem to throw everything into a punch. Ali is basically not a devastating puncher. Joe's main asset is his power. And Ali's main asset is the speed and, and the sharpness. And uh, in this fight, conditioning, physical conditioning is going to mean a lot in the, in the few rounds that are left. Round 12. Starts the round every round, scoring heavily. I'm up, I'm up. seems to be coasting a little bit here. And Ali is scoring on him. Two minutes left in the round. looking for a spot on the inside. <laughs> the round half over. Get out of the road, Sam. Get out of the road. Get out of the road, Sally. go on the round. Frazier seems to be bleeding from the mouth. First sign of blood in the fight. showed signs of tiring for the first time in that round. He had Ali on the ropes a couple of times and uh, he didn't seem to have any zip. Now, that's just my opinion. What do you think? I think he was told from his corner by Eddie Futch that uh, he's been throwing a lot of hard shots to the body. And they don't want a reiteration of what happened with Foreman of throwing yourself out on the ropes. So I, I would have to say that I think Eddie had told the man, like, to get some on the ropes, throw the punches, don't put, just, don't put as much power into them, just get the points behind them. Did you go over strategy with Futch before this fight and uh, have him tell you what his strategy was? Uh, no, I didn't. No. Anyway, there's Muhammad Ali's corner. And you notice on Muhammad's punches, he doesn't have as much in them. They're not as quick as they used to be in the beginning. He's throwing good sharp punches, but they're oh, not I as quick. They were, I thought they were pretty quick in that round. I don't well, think so, Don. You're the expert. Round 13.
Alley trying to set the pace again. Alley ready to open up with those combinations. Both boys slow down for a moment. a small cut under his right eye. And he's very puffy under those eyes. Very puffy. Lost his mouthpiece again. As long oh, as I didn't see it come out. As long as the cut is under the eye, it shouldn't be too bad for him because the blood cannot run into the eye. Getting a little smelling salts there, Ken. We're waiting for round 14. I would think that Ali has uh, regained the command of the fight. That's very true. Ali seems to coast until he sees an opening. When he has the opening, he seems to throw a big, rapid flurry. This has been Joe's downfall. Joe cannot match hand speed with him. So when Ali throws a quick flurry, Joe is very vulnerable. Very vulnerable. Joe has taken a lot of punishment in the last couple of rounds. Anyway, we're coming up to round 14. I got 8 four, one Ali has gone out for a knockout, I think, in this round. Whether he gets it or not is something else. about the interview in the ring. Thank you, 
score that he had in the middle round. round of the fight for anybody. Frazier was within a punch or two of going down. The doctor comes up and looks at Frazier. I think it's going to be over. It's all over. get up in the ring and I'm up in the ring here and Muhammad Ali is pretty well spent and I'm going to try to get over at him We're, we're trying to get in here to talk to Ali, who has retained his title, and I think he needs a little air, because this has to have been one of the most bruising heavyweight championships of all time. Our cameraman's trying to get in here. Bertie, Bertie Pacheco, how is Ali? Ali is very good, only as you can see, he wanted to avoid all the pushing and mauling that goes on after one of these fights. Yeah. I think it was well stopped. I nice that they cleared the ring. Well, they're doing a better job here than they have any place else. I'm going to ask Herbert Muhammad to come over here. Herbert is the manager and a fine manager of uh, Muhammad Ali. Herbert, you must be very happy. I am very happy. All praise due to Allah. And I'm very proud of Muhammad. And I think Joe Fraser should be recommended for the brilliant fight he put on. Thank you very much. much. A fine, brilliant fight. Here's Joe Frazier come over to talk to Muhammad Ali. He's disappointed. Muhammad, can you say a word now around the world? Congratulations, like first of all. You'll be champion Ladies a long time. Ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. To Wallace Muhammad, the leader of the Muslims now in America. Assalamu alaikum to my beautiful wife, Khalil Ali, family Belinda. Hello, the male Sloan of Louisville, the Central High School. We're trying to get another word. Muhammad, I'd like to ask you about the fight. Just just a question. Did you have any doubt about winning at any time? Well, in round 10, I surprised Joe had so much stamina. I surprised as he was. And if I didn't have the condition, I know I would have lost. It was too much pressure. I think he deserved a, a lot of... He is the greatest fighter of all times next to me. Except for you. Except for me. Thank you very much, Muhammad Ali, and good luck. Now, one of you to go to Elliot Brown out there in Louisville, John J. Hooker, uh, all How about, uh, John Brown and everybody. 
Well, what do you think now? What's the future? Foreman against George Martin, Foreman? and you fight the winner? That's right, and then I want to retire. This is too painful. <laughs> it's too much work. Okay. Might have a heart attack or something. All I want right. to get up before I'm, while I'm on top. I know you're tired. Thank you again, and congratulations. One more thing. I want everybody to know that I'm the greatest fighter of all times, and the greatest city of all times is Louisville, Kentucky. Here's the president. Ferdinand Marcos, the president of the Philippines, coming over to talk to Muhammad Ali. Right, Jim. Right, Jim. Let's go ahead and get the trophy. President Marcos, could I just ask a word? Yes, yes, sir. What think of the fight? Wonderful, wonderful. Here's the uh, trophy being given to Muhammad Ali by the president of the Philippines, Ferdinand Marcos. Beautiful trophy. It goes on exhibit in Louisville, Kentucky at the high school where I came up from. I want to say hello to everybody at Madison Junior High School. It's got a new name now, Virginia Avenue and Duval Junior High. Greatest schools in the world because I went there in Louisville, Kentucky. Good luck to you. Thank you very much.